I would like to begin by acknowledging that I live on the land uh, that is recognized by Treaty 6. Uh, this is land that has been a gathering place um, for a number of First Nations groups throughout the history of um, Turtle Island, long before it was known as Canada. Honoring the land in this way uh, acknowledges the story of creation of this country in a way that has historically been missing. The value of taking the moment and noticing the power of the land is really important to me and something I've become a lot more mindful of um, as I've gotten wiser. Particularly in this latest uh, time when we were not connecting physically um, with others, for me connecting with the land um, allowed me to feel peace and calmness in a time that didn't feel peaceful and calm. I want to share a brief excerpt uh, from a book called Braiding Sweet Grass by uh, Robin Wall Kimmerer, um, particularly because this book illustrated the connection to land in a way that I had not before considered. Also because of the topic of our presentation, I come here to listen, to nestle in the curve of the roots in a soft hollow of pine needles, to lean my bones against the column of white pine, to turn off the voice in my head until I can hear the voices outside it, the shh of wind and needles, water trickling over rock, nut hatch tapping, chipmunks digging, beech nut falling, mosquito in my ear, and something more something that is not for me, for which we have no language, the wordless being of others in which we are never alone. Listening in wild places, we are audience to conversations in language, not our own. Welcome to sharing our leadership stories, inspiring others and meeting standards. My name is Charlie Craig, and I'm the co-regional network chair of Women in Ed Alberta. I was very fortunate to be part of the launch of Women in Ed Canada several years ago, and since then have watched our network grow within Canada and particularly within Alberta. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Canada, we are a very large country. Um, we could be found just above the United States of America in North America. And uh, I live in this province here um, of Alberta. And in fact, the town that I currently live in is called Lloyd Minster. And it is the only town in Canada that is partially in Alberta and is partially in Saskatchewan. So we are the only border city within the country. Alberta itself is very large and long um, and um, it takes many, 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 many hours to get from one side to the other or from the top to the bottom. And because of this, um, it really has been important that we've been able to connect through Women in Ed um, as a virtual network of uh, educators that would likely not be able to connect with each other regularly due to the size of our country and the size of our province. In Alberta, the government has issued both a teacher quality standard and a leadership quality standard. There is one standard uh, and that is this. Quality leadership occurs when the leader's ongoing analysis of the context and decisions about what leadership knowledge and abilities to apply result in quality teaching and optimum learning for all students. Within that standard, there are a number of competencies. Within each competency, there are indicators to help us identify areas of strength within our leadership practice and areas for growth. Specific to this conversation is how is it that being part of the Women in Ed network 
contributes to the fulfillment of these competencies and therefore uh, achievement of the standard. And there's actually two connections within the competencies that align with this idea of sharing our stories as leaders. The first lies in developing leadership capacity. One of the indicators under this competency is identifying, mentoring, and empowering teachers in educational leadership roles. Next, within the understanding and responding to the larger societal context, one of the indicators is an understanding of local, provincial, national, and international in issues and trends and their implications for education. One of the things that I think is unique to the Women in Ed Network is the acknowledgement of the issues that are common to each of our contexts and the issues that are unique to our contexts. And because of the connection that we have with one another through the network and through sharing our stories, I think it allows for school leaders to tap into some of those international trends and issues and understanding the impact of that uh, within our own contexts. I think it's important that we recognize the power that stories have in them and our ability as women to share the narratives of our leadership and the stories of our leadership because that's how we create entry point into conversation um, and into connections with one another that we may not have seen initially without the storytelling aspect. And when we want to mentor and connect and empower teachers to join formal leadership roles within schools, uh, and we want to connect with one another outside of the people we see every day, um, I think the way that we do that is through story. I'm going to share with you several excerpts from a book called Story Catcher by Christina Baldwin. Uh, and I selected these excerpts actually um, during a presentation on our first Women in Ed Canada meet um, where Women in Ed Canada was launched. And to me, um, it just really summarizes the importance of sharing our stories and understanding the impact that this can have, like a ripple effect that leaves us and um, circles out beyond ourselves and somehow um, perhaps influences someone else who hears the story. Baldwin writes, Story is the narrative thread of our experience, not what literally happens, but what we make out of what happens, what we tell each other and what we remember. Words are how we think. Narrative is how we link. As long as we share our stories, as long as our stories reveal our strengths and vulnerabilities to each other, we reinvigorate our understanding and tolerance for the little quirks of personality that in other circumstances would drive us apart. When we live in a family, a community, a country, where we know each other's true stories, we remember our capacity to lean in and love each other into wholeness. And that's just it, really. When we are true and share our stories and our experiences, the good, the bad, and the ugly, it connects us. It connects us in a way that sharing a CV doesn't, that uh, making small talk doesn't. When we can be authentic and really talk about the struggles that we have as leaders, I think that's where that community feeling comes from. Baldwin also writes, story is a search for community. Open your mouth, grab a pen, type on the keyboard, sing out for who you are, for I need you. I am looking for you, and you are looking for me. Something is happening to me. I am thrown into the spiral of my experience. I've never been here before. 
I'm disoriented, but I know I cannot possibly be the first human to experience this. Where are the stories? Not that I'm going to live through something exactly the way anyone else has, but the purpose of the map is to show us how, and then I take my own steps. The story that gets one person through makes a map for getting the next person through. Story catching is really the art of story releasing, of putting good stories out into the world, holding them high and tossing them into the wind like a hawk taking flight into freedom. When I was um, pregnant with my second child, uh, I was very frustrated because there were a number of job opportunities that were coming up um, that I knew I couldn't apply for, not because I wouldn't be hired, but because as a family, um, we had decided it was my turn to be the stay-at-home parent as my husband uh, stayed home with our eldest. And it was through conversation and story that I had with a mentor where she shared that um, she too felt those same frustrations at a time when she was home uh, with her oldest and people were being hired that she knew um, maybe didn't have the same qualifications that she did. And she said to me at that time, you need to have faith that when you do step back into the world of work, that whatever position um, awaits for you is the one you were supposed to have. And as much as it was a challenge to hear that at the time, um, that sharing of story and experience really resonated with me and supported me into a transition to stay-at-home parenting, um, which was its own other like world of learning. Um, and shout out to the Maternity Paternity Teachers Network um, that I discovered through Women in Ed uh, that also helped me find an identity outside of my day-to-day -day life as a teacher. So where do we begin? Um, I don't think it's necessary to, you know, have your leadership story photocopied and, and, you know, you pass it out, but taking some time to unpack what got you here uh, to, your, to your space of leadership um, allows you to see where those entry points might be for someone else. So one of the activities um, that I've participated in um, as a uh, research participant um, for a colleague's PhD was something called a leadership timeline. And what we did was sat down from early grade school all the way into our teaching careers as a timeline, and we identified times in our lives that we felt led us into leadership. And particularly in that experience, it was interesting that the four of us doing the activity all identified a time in grade five or six where we were given the opportunity to lead in some way, um, whether that was through sport, school council, um, maybe through the arts, but each of us experienced something in that time frame that made us think, okay, maybe I've got something that I can bring to the table. Um, and then we all had something in high school that we could identify and, and, and you know, it, it continued to um, evolve, but it was really interesting through that experience, being able to say, hey, it was when this person came to me and said, I think you'd be really great for this job or this position, or, hey, you've really got a knack for this. I would really like to see, you know, could you help me over here? Um, and being able to identify those times in our own leadership narratives allows us to see space or leaders in opportunities we wouldn't normally look. Um, so creating your own um, timeline as a leader to help unpack your narrative uh, is a really interesting activity to, to partake in. Um, particularly if you're doing it with a group of people that you could then share out. 
The next activity that I have found to be very interesting uh, with a group of people, or even just as a personal reflection activity, is that of identifying an artifact that is significant to you as a leader. And taking apart and thinking about what is it that makes that artifact significant? Um, how does it contribute to your perceptions or your persona as a leader? Um, and again, what you're doing when you're thinking through this process of reflection is you're looking for those opportunities where you can connect that piece of yourself with someone else. Because that's the power of story, that when we share the stories that we have about our own leadership experiences, we're creating space for connection with other leaders, with potential leaders, um, with leaders that live all the way across the Atlantic Ocean in a very different time zone than us um, here in Alberta. So that's the power of story. That's the work that we need to do as leaders um to build those connections sharing our leadership stories not only means that we are meeting the leadership standard for our context in alberta um, that we are evaluated against and and build our professional growth plans from but more importantly we're hopefully inspiring others we're connecting with one another we're tapping into entry points of conversation with future leaders, with current leaders who are maybe struggling with something similar um, that we have also experienced. The power of story is that it goes beyond me in my building and ripples out to maybe other teachers in my building who are interested in leadership, maybe other leaders within my school authority, maybe other leaders and teachers within my province, within my country, or within the network that stretches the globe, um, rippling across the Atlantic, all the way over uh, to our friends in the UK. So thank you very much for this opportunity to share with you, to talk with you about the power of story and the importance of unpacking our own leadership narratives. Uh, greetings to all of you from Alberta. Please take care of one another and keep in touch.